So I started some videos a while back, ranking the best player at each position for every team. But they always get taken down or demonetized. So what I'm gonna do instead is rank the top 10 players at each position. And I already did a video for the best point and shooting guards for every team, so that leads us to ranking the top 10 small forwards in NBA history. Now there were a lot of ways this list could have gone, so definitely comment anything you agree or disagree with. Let's get into it. Number 10, Dominique Wilkins. The fact that Dominique never won an NBA championship did drop him down a little bit on this list. But even though he didn't, Wilkins still definitely deserves to be in the top 10 small forwards of all time. The man's mainly remembered for his monster in-game dunks because, well, that's what he specialized in. And he always has and always will be remembered for having some of the most powerful in-game dunks we've ever seen, whether it was his one or two-handed tomahawks. But away from dunking, Dominique made the Atlanta Hawks great. He never had an all-star team, but at one point he did lead the Hawks to four straight 50-win seasons, averaged 30 points a game in 1986 and 88, was a nine-time all-star and a one-time scoring champion. Number 9, James Worthy. Magic Johnson and Kareem have a lot to thank Big Game James for because he was one of the pivotal players that made up the Showtime Lakers and their fast-paced offense. Because James was the perfect guy for that team because he excelled on the fast break, whether it was finishing with a finger roll or his famous Statue of Liberty dunk. And on top of that, he had a deadly turnaround jump shot that he could hit from anywhere inside the three. He got his nickname Big Game James from consistently showing up in the playoffs and the finals every year. I mean, the man averaged 17 a game in the regular season and 21 a game in the playoffs. So he was a much better postseason player, which doesn't happen too often. And even though he did play with Magic and Kareem, there were a couple entire postseasons and even NBA Finals where James Worthy led the entire Lakers in scoring, including the 88 Finals where he won the Finals MVP. Number 8. Rick Barry. Even though Rick Barry might be remembered as one of the NBA's biggest jerks of all time, and for shooting his free throws like a grandma, he'll always be remembered as one of the greatest small forwards of all time. As a senior in college, the man averaged 37 points a game, which led to him being taken second overall by the San Francisco Warriors, and he instantly made them better. As a rookie, he averaged 25 and 10, taking the Warriors from 17 wins the season before to 35 wins. And the next season, his career career really took off when he averaged over 35 a game in his second season in the league and led his team to the NBA Finals, losing to Wilt Chamberlain and the 76ers. But he'd go on to play four seasons in the ABA before returning to the NBA right where he left off. And then he'd go on to lead his team to an NBA championship in 1975 and be named the Finals MVP. He'd retire in 1980, finishing his career being a one-time NBA champion, a Finals MVP, an eight-time All-Star, a five-time member of the All-NBA First Team, a scoring champion, and a steals leader. Number 7, John Havlicek. Havlicek is without a doubt one of the NBA's all-time great players and just athletes in general. In 1962, he not only was drafted by the Boston Celtics, but he actually got drafted into the NFL by the Cleveland Browns too. And we all know which one he picked. Hondo's presence quickly became known in the NBA and he developed into one of the greatest six men of all time. He had the ability to do anything he wanted on both ends of the court and was really known as having more stamina than anyone else, which let him dominate on fast breaks, outrun his opponents, and still never get tired. And on top of all of that, he was a guy that really would have benefited from a three-point line because he was always shooting from deep. All of this, and Bill Russell, helped the man become an 8-time NBA champion, a Finals MVP, a 13-time All-Star, a 4-time member of the All-NBA First Team, and a 5-time member of the All-Defensive First Team. Number 6, Elgin Baylor. Elgin Baylor might not have ever been an NBA champion, and yeah, that was something that dropped Dominique down, but that doesn't stop Baylor from coming in at number 6, because he's one of the most underrated players in league history. His name doesn't get thrown around as much as it should when talking about all-time greats. The man dominated the game of basketball at every level he played at, whether it was high school, college, and even the NBA. As a 6'5 small forward that played in the same era as Bill Russell and Wilt Chamberlain, Baylor averaged 27 points and almost 14 rebounds a game and in his best season he averaged an insane 38.3 points and 18.6 rebounds a game and it was stats like that that helped Elgin take his team from the worst team in the league to the NBA finals the same year he was drafted. Number 5 Scottie Pippen 
We all know what Scottie Pippen did with Michael Jordan. He was the key piece that MJ needed to help the Bulls win six NBA championships. He's an all-time elite defender and can do a little bit of everything on the court at all times. We got to see all of these things while Pippen and Jordan played together. But we got to see the real Scottie Pippen when Mike retired for the first time in 1993. Because during the 93 and 94 season, Pippen stepped out of Jordan's shadow and had by far the best year of his career. He led the Bulls to 55 wins, averaged 22 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists, 3 steals, and .8 blocks a game, which led Chicago in scoring, assists, blocks, and steals. And he finished with a career best 32% from three. And if all that's not enough, that led to him finishing third in MVP voting that year. And then the next season without Jordan didn't go as smoothly because even though Jordan returned with 17 games left in the season, they only finished with 47 wins. But Pippen still led the Bulls in every major statistical category that season. So there's a chance that if Scotty was a star on his own team, he might even be ranked higher. But he would have won a lot less championships. And there's also a pretty good chance that he wouldn't have had the confidence or the in-game knowledge to be that good if it wasn't for playing with the GOAT. So number five is where he's staying. Number four, Julius Irving. Julius Irving spent the first five seasons of his career dominating the ABA and winning two NBA championships. And when he joined the 76ers, not too much changed. He was instantly a fan favorite for being one of the first perimeter players that had size, could play like a guard, and posterize anyone in his path. For a little while there, there was even a lot of people that thought Dr. J was the greatest player of all time. And now today he's remembered as one of as being one of the greatest dunkers of all time. But don't let that overshadow the fact that he was always an excellent defender, ball handler, passer, and his eighth on the all-time scoring list. The man was consistently a great player throughout his entire career, and let that show by making the All-Star team every single year he played, led the 76ers to the finals four times, and won an NBA championship in 1983. Number three, Kevin Durant. All right, I might catch some heat for putting Durant as high as number three. Don't get me wrong, I'm no Warriors fan, but I do think KD deserves a spot. He's in his prime right now at 29 years old, and he's already proved he's gonna go down as one of the greatest scorers of all time when it's all said and done. He ranks higher than Dr. J because he's just as good of a defender and a far better scorer than Dr. J was. And Durant does now have two NBA championships, probably three after this season, but however many he wins for the Warriors, they're not gonna be remembered the same as regular championships since he joined the best team in the league, since he joined the best team in the league. But even with that being said, the man's still a two-time finals MVP in series against LeBron James, a four-time scoring champion, has made the All-NBA first team six times, and a regular season MVP. He's shown that when it's all said and done, he's got the ability to maybe even go down as the second greatest small forward of all time. Number two, Larry Bird. For KD to go down as the second greatest small forward of all time, he's really gonna have to do a lot to take Bird's spot because Larry Bird was a three-time NBA champion and a three-time consecutive MVP that at one time was thought of as the greatest NBA player of all time. Bird led his team to 60 wins in his rookie season to the NBA Finals five times, winning three of them. He'll always be remembered as one of the greatest shooters of all time, even though the three-point line was put in in his rookie season. And on top of all of that, Larry Bird was far from the best athlete, but what he lacked physically, he made up mentally for being able to get into the heads of opponents better than mostly anyone else in NBA history. Number one. LeBron James. Alright, there's no real argument here. It looks like LeBron's gonna hold down this spot for a very long time. And maybe not ever be passed. Because like the fact that Magic Johnson will pretty much always be the greatest point guard of all time, and Jordan will always be the greatest shooting guard of all time, there's a good chance no small forward will ever surpass LeBron James. Well, unless they can win in the finals. Alright, alright, don't freak out LeBron fans. One little roast, but he still gets the spot as the greatest small forward of all time. And that's it for this list. So like I said, comment your thoughts down below and let me know what you think. Don't forget to like. And if you want to see more videos like this one and a ranking of the top 10 power forwards and centers in NBA history, don't forget to subscribe. As always, I'll catch you next video.